Here we go, today is the day. The forms are coming off the concrete slab. We poured this bad boy three days ago. It's been drying and the size of it is 14 feet wide, 32 feet long, and it's about six inches thick. We went with 4,000 PSI concrete and we thought originally that we did half inch rebar in here. Turns out we went to Home Depot, they loaded us up with the wrong stuff. So this has 3 8 inch rebar, 5 8 inch rebar along the edge. Let's do it, let's get these forms off, see how we did. So I've been pretty excited about this thing. I have been coming out here every day about four or five times, eating lunch out here, eating breakfast out here, just standing at it and looking at it because I'm so excited about it. I did a ton of steaks on this thing. We didn't want a blowout, but everything went perfect. Everything's nice and straight. I don't know exactly how this is gonna work. These are either gonna pop right off or they're not, and we'll see what happens. One part of the concrete that you don't lose. Oh my gosh, we got movement. We got almost all the stakes out. Some of them we're gonna have to wait until we get the forms off. They just wouldn't come out. This one's unscrewed. Let's check this out. Not too pretty right here. This is where the concrete got really dry. You see that? This is where the concrete was nice. That looks pretty nice. I think it looks about what we were expecting. It's it's a little rough. It's not like our um, our wood stove slab we did where we wanted it nice and smooth. We noticed that this concrete that we had delivered seemed like it was a little bit gravelly. And when we got towards the end and we started running out of gravel, it got like a little dry. So you can see this is pretty smooth over here. That's a nice edge. I'm pretty happy with that. But as you come towards the end where we were throwing rocks in there and kind of trying to save ourselves from having more concrete delivered, it's a little like a pity i guess or gappy and that's where it was kind of kind of dry on the end what we are going to do with this slab when we're done with it is we're going to kind of build back up the gravel around here so this will all kind of be hidden as long as it's solid which it it seems like it is i think we should be okay let's get the rest of these things unscrewed and see how they look whoa seems like it's tight right here with this let me get that that works it's a really nice edge on that one Hey, this looks, this looks really good. Look at that. Things are looking great. We ended up with a really cool color. I don't know if it's going to dry a lot more. It's already dried considerably. We have these little spots. You can probably see it in the camera. I don't mind it. I think it looks cool. Like Eric was saying, this gravel or this concrete was pretty gravelly. Um, I don't know if that's typical, but I think that's what those spots are. And I think it's pretty cool. And the lighter concrete has this really cool sheen or like sparkle, which I'm really into. I don't know what that is. As a whole, it looks really good since we did run out um, in the last video where we were pouring it. Um, I think it, I think it just looks awesome. And as it's dried, you really cannot see any imperfections or anything like that. So I think once the gravel's up here and we have like posts and everything, I think we're gonna be really, really excited. Okay, you straight? Yeah. 128 is right. Oh, it's working really good now. I just hope it lasts. It goes the distance, you know what I mean? Once it gets dry. It's going like that, huh? Hey, but that's uh, better than it was. What happened? 
Did I not? The slab's brand new, it's beautiful, and we're about to take a saw to it, and we're gonna cut some relief joints. So through our research, we have learned that all concrete cracks, and these relief cuts or relief joints are gonna help it crack there, if that makes any sense. So we're gonna cut about an inch to an inch and a half deep. We're gonna do three big cuts on this thing, and there's certain math on how deep you wanna go with your cut. What I found online was you wanna do a quarter of how many inches you're doing. So we're doing a six inch slab, so a quarter of that is an inch and a half. So we're gonna cut an inch and a half deep. And then as far as spacing goes on your cuts, you can do them kind of a lot of different ways. There's a big variance you can do, but you don't wanna not do enough. So we're gonna do one big one down the center, and that's seven feet on this side, seven feet on this side. And then our slab luckily splits into thirds. So we're gonna do 128 inches, we're gonna go another 128 inches. We're gonna do another cut. So we're gonna end up with six equal squares on this thing when we're completely done. And I'm pretty nervous about doing this. So let's go check out what we're gonna to use to cut this thing. Oh, this is the big boy. So this is a still TS 420 and this is like 67 cc's of just cutting power. You can cut all kinds of stuff with this saw and we have a diamond blade on there right now. And this one's specifically meant for cutting concrete. I've seen people do this different ways. Some people will use this and just cut the concrete dry and it seems like there is a lot of dust involved. But this saw has a little connection right here where you can actually hook in a garden hose and you can turn this little valve on, follows this hose right here and it goes in and it lubricates the blade as you're cutting and it also helps cut down on the dust. So we've got the little pond over there that Bandit's been scratching around in and I have a sump pump that I'm gonna hook to the generator and I'm gonna hook a garden hose to this. Hopefully that works. We're a little too far away from the house to hook a hose to the house. Let's get this thing all hooked up and we'll, we'll give this a go. See how this works out. So right there. So that way we'll be able to gauge how deep we go. Hopefully that doesn't wash off. Let's let that dry. But also you could go a little shallower. I could go a little shallower. I'm aiming for an inch to an inch and a half. We're gonna be using the sump pump today and this sump pump we bought a few years ago when we had our root cellar at the other place and it would flood. So this uh, sump pump has a lot of use, pumping the water out of that thing. And I have a little garden hose nozzle on here so we can just hook up a garden hose. We're gonna stick it in there. This is a float for the sump pump. So basically when this thing's in the water and this thing floats up, I don't know if you could hear that, but it turns on. So we're gonna position this up when we want water to flow. Here it is, dude. So I gotta hold this up here? Not yet. He's biting it. Bandit, don't bite that. Okay, that's definitely on. Put it down? Stick it down for me. Good. Oh, that place is awesome. Who does that kind of stuff? My new that's favorite store. Relatively straight. It looks straight. That's to only me. about a half inch, I believe. So look, if you go in, see how deep I am? I'm not very deep, but what I just did there is that now I have a guide and hopefully I can just start it up and I can make one more cut. up is right here. What, it fits or something? No, it kind of started, started going to the right a tiny bit. See yeah, it's a little thicker. Okay. The whole thing looks this good, I'd be really happy. 
Wow, that is uh, extremely hard work. This saw is heavy and then you're dragging this hose around and you're just trying not to mess up the brand new concrete slab that you just poured. But this saw is also just like a beast. It is amazing how this thing can cut through that concrete like without even trying. Uh, so pretty impressive there. That one turned out pretty good. So I went through and I went about half the depth, maybe like half of an inch and then I finished it off and you can see that it has a nice, pretty, I mean, pretty beautiful line for my first try. I had one spot here where I started to go over a little bit, but all in all, I'm really happy with that cut. On this next one, what I'm gonna try, I might try just, just putting it in, getting it to an inch and a half, and just cutting it all in one cut, and we'll see how that goes. But this is pretty cool. I don't even, I think you're beating yourself up. Oh, thank you. I think hey, it looks he's like- He's kicking all the water out of there. Hey, hey. Straight yeah, right as heck. Yeah. You did. Oh my gosh, that is I... painful. That is hard work on your wrist. <laughs> That was Good crazy. Job. Well, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. It was extremely hard and painful, but that turned out pretty good. We're going to get this thing washed off and uh, reveal what it looks like. That was wow, cool. Wow, hon. Man, this saw is a beast, but it's freaking, it's heavy. Feel, feel how heavy that thing is. But does it have anything to do with the fact that you're freehanding the entire thing? And yeah. Like two inches away from your toes? Yeah. They make a cart for this and you can just push it, but... Lightly pressure wash the concrete. We wanted to be really careful because you're not actually supposed to pressure wash it until it's cured. And in this case, they say like 30 days or up to a year. So concrete takes a really long time to reach its full uh, potential, its full strength and fully cure. I think it looks good. I wasn't able to get all the marks out because I didn't want to like really pressure wash it too close. But I think we got most of that concrete dust off and it is sawmill time now. Why am I so confused right now? It's been a long time. Looks like we had one there. That's where they go. They go. No, that's not right. Yeah, I can see the next one was right here. I'm gonna have to bust out the 10,000 page manual for this thing. <laughs> I couldn't. Flip it over? We could probably just come by and just lift Look. it up a little and stick it in. Done. far side of the sawmill we got that leveled because it slopes down a little bit over there but the rest of this should sit pretty level if we did a good job and we're going to put this thing together it's in two pieces so it's going to bolt together with these big plates we have right here and then these like kind of go in between that and connect the two pieces and then this is also what the wheels kind of roll on it's good to have the sawmill back i think it's been about eight months since we took her apart all right let me get this one on here see how this doesn't take much to get it going right you can do it by hand I can go full throttle on this drill and look how slow it moves. See how it's not moving? But then once you tighten it up, full throttle, watch it. 
Oh, Eric, what's yes. going on? I was like AI. Look at this. It's <laughs> so slow. I don't and then... like that sound it made. I don't want to do that again. Okay. What can I say guys, the sawmill looks sweet in here. So when we first wanted to build this thing, I was thinking doing a little smaller, about two foot smaller. I was thinking 12 feet by 30 feet. Errol said, you should probably just build it bigger. You're probably not gonna be unhappy if you do. And I'm telling you right now, this is like right at home out here on this slab. So we got it leveled pretty good. We're gonna use a laser level, I think, to get it perfect. But we're gonna call it quits on this tonight. I gotta move a bunch of stuff. We have a big delivery coming tomorrow and we will see you guys then. Well, we got our delivery this morning. We got some huge logs that were just brought in by a semi with a self unloading truck. And these things, I'm not exaggerating, are, are massive. I mean, look at the diameter on this thing. We don't have a lot of big trees like this on our property. And now we have a huge pile of them. We're gonna get back out here and start working on the sawmill again. Do you see this one? Like, will that even fit on the sawmill? Yours can do 22. No, it can do 29. That's under 29. Before we get to cutting with the sawmill, we're gonna do a little bit of much needed maintenance on her. So this is our sawmill. We've had it for like two to three years. It's a Norwood Lumbermate 29. That means you can cut logs 29 inches in diameter. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull off the blade guards. We got the grease gun. We're gonna grease everything that needs grease on her. You gotta put some more fluid in there, huh? I know I got some water for it. You got her? Yeah. So these are called the track sweepers and these basically sweep off the track of debris. And we're putting a little mixture of diesel fuel and chainsaw bar oil on here to keep them lubricated. We got, we got two of these to do? Yeah. Put those in. Oh, they're dirty as heck, look at that. There's a cable in here that raises and lowers the sawmill head and we're putting a little bit of oil on there. there Sawmills use lubrication for the uh, bandsaw blade and what we use is water. And then since we're cutting pine, which has a lot of sap in it, we're gonna put a little bit of dish soap in there. The next thing we're gonna do is do an oil change on our machine here. This has the Kohler motor, so it's an upgraded motor you can get for this one. I believe it's a 14 horsepower, and we don't have that many hours on this machine, so this is our first oil change. And we're gonna start up the engine, and that's gonna heat up the oil and thin it out. That way we can get all of the oil out. But let me show you the little problem we're facing over here. This little plug right here is the drain plug. Right there. And as you can tell, that's like right against this, uh, 
metal frame. There's absolutely nowhere for it to drain. So if I take that plug out, it's just gonna go everywhere. So what I think I'm gonna do is try to siphon with some of this hose. I got some extra out of where you put the oil in and we're gonna see if that works. Apparently Norwood sells an oil change kit for these, which is like another plug that goes in there that has a, a little valve on it and you can just open it up and, and drain the oil out of a hose, but they didn't send me one and I didn't know I needed one. So let's, let's fire this up, let's see how she runs and uh, we'll see if we can get the oil siphoned out. Actually, you know what? I don't think it'll start. It's not gonna start with that off. I gotta put these back on. We're gonna see if this works. We're gonna stick this hose where you would fill up the oil we're gonna put it down in the crankcase and I'm gonna suck on it and see if we can get the oil to come out. We'll drain it into our used oil jug. Get your jug ready, cause... My jug is ready. Here, give me that cardboard, actually. It's working. Slowly. No, that's not in the manual. They don't say to do that. <laughs> What'd you say? Give the air cleaner, or the air filter, a little check here. There's quite a bit of dust on that little extra sock it's got on there. Let's go clean it over here. That still looks... I think for how much we've used them. Did you just lick it? No, I was touching against my <laughs> lip because some of these oil, some of these filters have a, you oil them. Did that one get ripped from you taking it off? No, I don't. It's a tear from a finger. That wasn't for me. It almost looks like a baby bit it. It's got like teeth marks in it. You see that? I don't know, but I'm gonna go clean this off with some water real quick. I'll be right back. How are you gonna measure it this time? I'm gonna measure down from the blade where it'll cut to where the actual log sits. Right, right there. Oh, you're not measuring the track right now to see if it's straight? The next step is cutting some lumber. So the sawmill right now is sitting directly on the concrete and we want to raise it up for a couple different reasons. The first reason is to be comfortable. So when you're sawing, it's always a little nicer if this thing is sitting up a little higher, you can kind of stand up straight. Another reason is the log dog. So if you look right now and I can stick this in, that's as low as it goes before it hits the concrete and that is not low enough. So we're going to need this to sit down like Basically, you want an ideal situation to go all the way down. So we're gonna do eight by eight beams under each one of these cross members. When we had it set up at the old place, we did six by six beams and I wish we went a little bigger. So we're gonna go a little bit bigger this one. We're gonna get one of those logs cut to length. We're gonna bring it over here. We're gonna see if we can get it cut. We got it pretty much level how it is right now, at least good enough to cut some beams. And then once we get the beams under here, we'll uh, get it perfectly level. Let's see how this thing does. So the logs we're working with are local white spruce. So the same type of tree that we have on this property, they're just way bigger. Um, and what we're gonna do is cut eight inch beams out of this log. This is at 14 feet long. We should get four of them for this out of this one log. And when you're cutting with a sawmill, you have to account for the tapering of the log. And tapering is like the bottom of the tree is thicker than the top of the tree. So the top we're working with about 11 inches and that bottom was about 15 inches in diameter so that's a four inch difference so to make up for that we're going to put a two inch piece so we got this two inch block we're going to slide this under here and raise this side up a little bit 
we're working with live trees now or they're dead but they weren't dead when they were cut down so they're green and they're extremely heavy we have only cut dead trees with this sawmill beetle kill spruce so this is going to be a first for us we're going to see how this goes and one con to this type of wood is it is extremely heavy you can actually get these little jacks for this sawmill and you'll just sit under here with a little bottle jack and it'll raise this up for you but we didn't get those let's see if we can get this lifted up and get this under here i'm probably gonna need your help ariel <laughs> Okay, that, that is heavy. I'm not gonna lie, like extremely heavy. It's got a little bit of vibe, uh, but not bad. Get up flat against those lines. Uh, a little oh, more. I gotta kind of. That's a huge beam, hon. <laughs> oh my gosh. We can do beams like that for the top. Well, I think it's official. That is probably the best looking piece of wood the sawmill has ever seen. That is extremely nice, really straight, and just solid. You can feel it. Do you it's, hear how hard? Yeah, it's just solid. It's it's a nice, you can tell it's just a little moist, like, it, you know, it was alive. Look how straight and nice that is. That's an eight by eight beam. That is huge. Let's see if we can grab a tractor and we'll get that next one on here. Two by eight out of that. Go, look how nice that is. Nice and heavy. Seems to be cutting pretty level. This was our last one we're gonna cut. I had to back off the blade because it was gonna hit one of the log dogs earlier. So I'm gonna flip it over and see if I can shave that piece off. But we're gonna have to re-level this thing once we put it up on these beams. And eight by eight beams are huge and we're cutting true eight by eight. So they're eight inches by eight inches. And this thing is looking awesome. Let's see, where was that piece that you were looking at? Oh, it's right, right there, huh? Yeah. These are big beams, baby. That's pretty low. That's, it goes it goes lower than our old one did. Look at that. Perfect. Position. You don't even have to bend down. You can literally see your cuts from right here. That's all I gotta do if I want to look at where I'm cutting. You know we can't show this. I'm not trying to. All right, the sawmill finally has a new home. It's been really cool to see this vision come together. Come to what? what would come you say? to life. Play out. Come to life. Yes. Yeah. I'm super excited about it. <laughs> Uh, it's running good. It's cutting good and we want to just go over a few things So the reason we went ahead and bought logs this time around is 
pretty much for one thing and that's for time. So we have so many projects lined up for this summer, probably more than we're even gonna accomplish. And we're gonna be using a lot of lumber for our Quonset hut. We're gonna be building the end walls. So we wanted to have lumber on stock. We also have, we burn wood. So we need a little bit extra for that. Yeah. And these logs are awesome. They're, how long are they? These logs range anywhere from 40 feet to 48 feet long. And we got about 14 cords is what they say. So it's a yes. pretty good amount, definitely enough for a year to I hope. In the past, we have been able to get wood by ourselves or through neighbors um, that were getting rid of beetle kill trees. So it's really nice to have live, live trees and get our hands on them. So if you've ever hauled wood yourself or collected wood for a sawmill or firewood, you know that it takes a lot of time. So again, saving a little time, getting some wood brought in. And these are spruce, so they are a lighter, a lighter wood, but they're still tremendously heavy. Way too heavy for Eric and I. Yeah, we're used to the beetle kill, so we'll have to get used to these, but we got the tractor this time around. When we put in this area too, we had already envisioned that we'd have like a semi-truck coming in here. Um, so we picked, Eric picked this area right when we first got here. It had already been kind of cleared mm -hmm. and then it regrew. So we didn't really have to take any trees down, if I'm correct. Nope, just brush and some grass. And it's just this huge open area. It's gonna make traveling in here to and fro with the tractor very easy for you yep and everything great and when we put in this pad we prepared it for building a structure over this so we put some footers we built this pad bigger than we needed and the structure is going to come later on down the road so for now the sawmill's going to be out in the open but it's going to be great having a nice flat concrete slab to operate this thing on that would be awesome to use it in the winter i think that's like our dream yes we are done for the day out here yeah, it's a good two days worth of work. We got a lot accomplished. It went faster than I thought, but we're going to take the rest of the day off. We're bringing in a professional. He's going to level out the sawmill for us. We'll see you on the next one. We'll see you guys later. Folks are good to go. My job's done here.